friends. Welcome to Floss Tube and Variety Show number 120. Today is Friday, June 21st, 2024. And I'm Emily Williams in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Thank you so much for joining me. I know um, some of you are returning, hopefully many, many of you. Some of you are new and uh, you're all very welcome. Uh, I didn't make a video last week because I was traveling, which I'll tell you more about after a bit. But of course, as you know, floss tube is about cross stitch and variety show is about something else. So let's get started with cross stitch. So first off, I will show you on, I mean, under the roof of Blue Ionian Weather, charted by Golden Kite. Um, this is a painting 19th century painting. And I've done about 900 stitches since I last showed you and you can't tell at all. Maybe you vaguely can, but this is it anyway. Let me get it all in the frame. Most of what I've been working on has been in that girl's dress and up in the sky, some down below. I've been trying to pick up the individual stitches from the part that's mostly done, carry the threads out to the toward the end as I can and you know, just keep making progress. Um, I keep losing days. We were away. That's one way I lose days. And sometimes I have a busy day and that's another way I lose days. But it is still just possible if I average 60 stitches a day to make 15,000 stitches my total for this year. If I can't do that, I'm not gonna to be too troubled by it because I still think I, it would be within my reach to finish it in 2025. Um, I guess we'll see, won't we? Time will tell. Last, yes, last weekend, I was thinking, when was this? Yes, this is the 21st. So last weekend, I think was the third weekend of the month. I think so. Anyway, last weekend would have been, I think, the weekend that I would have been working on Nativity Sal. It's a hashtag. And I'm working on this piece, Bethlehem. And I knew I was going to be away and I didn't want to bring this with me to work on. So I worked on it before and after. Let me just move my needle minder. And I did make some progress from this tree on over is all new. Sorry, jiggling it around. So that's all new. We actually have a sheep. There's one more sheep that goes in here before we get to the actual manger. So it's, it is definitely coming. I had hoped to get a lot more stitches done this month, but it just wasn't possible. I had a a lot of things come up last week, or not just come up, but they were scheduled, and that will that slow me down, which is fine. It's fine. I mean, there's no there's no police. I would love to have this done by Christmas, but even if the stitching were done, I haven't completely decided how I'm going to finish it. So I'm not sure. I don't feel an urgency, but I do enjoy working on it on the third weekend of every month, Christmas themed stitching, whether religious or not religious, doesn't matter. Nativity Sal, and it's in the description field. If I were forced to pick only one project to work on for the rest of the year till it's done, I could be persuaded that this would, this could be a uh, candidate. I enjoy it. It's so much variety. I like the colors. I don't do that because I have a lot of other projects that I also enjoy, but here's where I am. And the big accomplishment is that the tree down here is finished and you see that tiny little bird. That's an over one bird. It's a good thing I liked making that one because there are, I think, 24 of them farther down on another tree. Let me just hold that up again. Um, 
I didn't do any more over one letters. I did work on it a few uh, days over the past couple of weeks. But I mostly, I think I mostly worked on that tree. It's all, it always surprises me how much stitching there is in something that looks sort of airy like that, but there's a lot to it. So anyway, that's fun. That's Hannah Campbell, Hands Across the Sea. This is um, a Verisois silk on 36 count ballet slippers by Fox and Rabbit. And Harriet Salt. I, again, I, I at one point I had counted all of that and sort of plotted out how I would do this in the course of two years. We'll see. But I did do a several more letters. Last time I showed it, I think I had just the A and the B. So C, D, E, I don't know if three counts is several, probably not. Started on F. Uh, this is 37 count Russian tea cake by Legacy Linen with one strand of DMC 321 over two linen threads. I really like this Legacy Linen. The feel of it, the, um, it's sort of hefty, has a certain body, amount of body, and 37 count is a nice size. Uh, you know, the, the one over, the one strand of thread looks nice. You can see the actual X's have definition, but it, the coverage is pretty good. So that's really, really nice. I, I cannot say that I would just work on this until it's done with in no other cross stitch, I can't. Because I think it's just because it's too daunting, but I have enjoyed what I've done. So, um, what else? I mean, whenever I start one of these videos, especially on a day like today, I think this is gonna be a short video. Probably won't be, but you know. So this, you may remember if you watched my videos, would have been early, early part of last year, I was working on this little sampler, Eliza Stringer, age six. This is Hands Across the Sea, unreleased. This was the special project for the people who participated in the Great British Sampler Weekend 2023. And I got it framed. Well, I should say I framed it. Um, so I went to Michael's and what I wanted was just a frame. So I talked with them and I learned to my interest that the smallest custom frame they will do is where the smallest dimension is at least seven inches. So what that meant was that I had to choose a frame that had enough depth so that the total was at least seven inches. And this is just seven, seven and an eighth maybe. And this is longer, of course. So I chose this molding, which I like it. You know, it's a little dark brown with a darker interior uh, deal. There's a technical term. I do like it, it's fine. Um, and they made the frame and my husband picked it up because I was having a crazy day and it was totally wrong, entirely wrong. So I went back the next day with the piece again and said, so this is the frame I ordered and it's entirely wrong. Um, can you redo it? And so he said, oh yes, I can. So it came back and again, I mean, so I shouldn't say again, it came back and it was almost perfect. But it was a little bigger than I thought it was gonna be. That is the inside dimensions were a little bigger. You can see how that it's really very temporarily put in here. Um, in that it is the right proportion and the same distance available on all sides of 
the stitching, but it didn't, this didn't fit right down in there. You know, it didn't exactly fit in there. There was a little gap and um, I was kind of surprised by that. I have thought, given some thought to what I took and what, how I might do it differently next time in order to get a better result, but but it is right, I would say. So what I ended up doing to actually get this to stay in here is I took some bits of batting and tucked them down in around this to brace it so that it wouldn't slide up and down or side to side. And that has worked. I think it's okay. And then I just took another piece of this uh, foam core board that happened to be there that was close to the right size and cut it so that it would fit in that opening and uh, then I just taped it in place. And this is not, I mean, clearly what I want to do is look at a, a YouTube video or, or a few of them to see what I could do differently and maybe do something differently. But I have a lot of pieces that are stitched that I would like to have framed. Doing it where I just got them to make a frame was a fairly reasonable in cost. I think this frame was $54 or something. All they did was make the frame. They didn't do anything else. But I'm really pleased to have that framed. Right now, for the time being, it's still sitting on my mantle. I will put it on the wall somewhere at some point once I get another one or two items framed. But I thought this was a good experiment I will take something else there with a little different set of instructions and see if I'm even more satisfied. And I am willing to use the same frame or certainly something that's the same color for other pieces. So it's nice. And bringing this out in order to work on it and seeing it around reminds me that I really do like it. It's a, it's a nice little sampler and frankly, I'm amazed that a six-year-old did it. Now, as you may remember, this was given to us as a blank, and not as a blank chart, as a chart with no colors. And we were supposed to use our whatever desires, imagination, and choose colors for it. And a lot of the people posted their pictures and showed it as um, monocolor. You know, they chose just red. And I wanted it to be a red sampler, but I thought that it was more in keeping with what I thought was probably the time period if it had some other colors. So I chose the red, the green, and the pink. There's just, a, there is some pink in there as the main colors. And then I had that tan color as the other color. And I used that uh, mainly down in this band and up here, EHW, those letters in the alphabet are stitched in that color, and that's my initials. So that's how I chose to do that. I like it. So you know, I would give that reasonable success. That score's reasonable, and that's pretty reasonable. So variety show. Um, So I'm going to tell you about my trip. Before, um, two weeks ago in my video, I told you about my trip that I was planning, and now I can tell you what happened. So first of all, we had a very nice time with my aunt, who's 96, my cousin and her husband and their daughter, and we saw some interesting things, uh, interesting places, beautiful sights. We ate some fantastic food at several different restaurants, and it was really very nice. Um, on my birthday, which was Sunday, we took the gondola. Well, we drove, 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 drove to, I guess we drove to uh, Crystal Mountain Ski Resort, and one of their, they have many ski trails multiple gondola and ski lift situations, only one of which is open in the summer for tourists. 
to go up. And so we went on that one and went up to the lodge, which is on a ridge that overlooks Mount Rainier. And I'll stick a picture to me in, a couple of pictures maybe of what we saw on the way up in the gondola, the view, which was spectacular. And, um, and then when we got up there, now we had, we knew we were taking a chance because it was um, cloudy, mostly partly cloudy. I almost said on the ground, I mean, in Seattle. And Mount Rainier is about 90 miles. This ski resort is about 90 miles from where my cousin lives, so. But it could have been, it could be different there. I mean, it could be sunny there. And at the foot of the mountain, it might be sort of cloudy, but at the higher up, it could be sunny. So it's hard to, it's really hard to say, no, no, we're not going because it's not worth it. Um, and as I pointed out to my cousin, you know, for Byron and me, everything we saw was different than what we see normally. So it's all interesting and all beautiful to us. Just because we don't see Mount Rainier, might not see Mount Rainier doesn't mean that it's worthless. So we, we got on the gondola, we went up, saw the views, and then we arrived up there. And not only was it cloudy, it was snowing. Isn't that something on my birthday? Just flurries. The, just a few flakes at that area at that particular altitude there was snow on the ground clearly it had fallen fairly recently and stuck to the ground and it was but it was about 40 degrees so it wasn't really going to stick uh, up there but we went in and had a nice lunch and kept watching and the sun came out a little bit but when we were out on the the deck area the grounds area Rainier never made an appearance, which is a disappointment, but as I say, that means that it's on the next time list. So that is perfectly fine with me to have that trip again, to do that trip again and have it on the next time list. But anyway, that was that was fun. And then we went back and had a light meal at their house uh, to celebrate my birthday. The night before we had gone to a really nice restaurant over on the Western, side of Seattle that looks back across Elliott Bay to the city. And I'll put a picture there here of that view, which is quite nice. And we went and visited the Pacific Bonsai Museum, which I think is a place that Brendan and Karen Kirk, Fox and Rabbit, visited when they were in the Pacific Northwest, would it have been last, last year maybe. Um, Anyway, I'm gonna to write to them and see if it's the same place. But my my cousin, my cousin's daughter, my first cousin once removed, to be specific, uh, works there. She's their events director. So that was, it was fascinating to see the trees there and to learn some more about how they, uh, care for them, what you, what you do to make a tree, to bonsai a tree, um, just so interesting. And, not, and some trees, just their structure becomes miniaturized, but their leaves don't. And some tree, the entire thing becomes miniaturized. So it was interesting to sort of look at different trees. Uh, and we had pleasant weather there it was you know wearing your coat kind of weather but it wasn't uh cold it wasn't windy it wasn't raining but it was really very interesting so my aunt is was thrilled to see us absolutely um she really did and she rose to the occasion in terms of being energetic to do all the things we did she was not that um, with it in terms of short-term memory. She asked the same question. She told the same stories. No, that was fine, really. I mean, it was fine for us because we were there for just a few days. I imagine that if one lived with her or near her, it would be tiring because 
you know, she, she had some things wrong that she persisted in believing. She couldn't really be persuaded to think differently, but the, I didn't mind at all. I truly didn't. And of course, one of the big things that she had wanted to do that she talked about for all the months since the last time I was there last year uh, was that we were gonna go to the yarn shop together. Stranded by the Sea is the name of the yarn shop. It's a nice shop. They have quite a bit of yarn. They have a big table that you can sit at and knit. Um, and they do their own dyeing. They dye yarn there. The woman who was manning the store when we were there is one of the dyers, or maybe the dyer. So it was interesting to talk to her a bit. And uh, they also sell yarn that is, uh, you know, dyed by other people or made by other people. So, and as you know, I went, I have a lot of yarn. I have confessed this before. And I do knit, but I don't knit constantly, but I do, I do knit, I enjoy knitting. I have enjoyed knitting since I was about five years old, probably. But what I had said was I'm, never, I'm not buying any more yarn for the rest of my life until I have knit several things, several of the batches of yarn that I have, I'm gonna knit before I buy any more. So that is excellent, that is what I, went into the, except for, I will buy yarn with my aunt if it seems that she is particularly interested in me buying some yarn because it makes her very happy. And then we have a project that I'm going to work on that we can talk about, which that makes her happy. And what's one skein of yarn? It doesn't matter. So I went, I have this rattly bag here, sorry. I should pull everything out at once. Everything, whoops, that's a clue. Um, so I went and I selected this. Now I don't wear yellow, but this is a very beautiful uh, yellow that my cousin June wears. This is a color she would wear. So I showed it to Aunt Ellen. I said, do you think June would wear a scarf made of this color? Oh yes, that's perfect for her. And so we agreed on that. So I set it aside you know, set it over on the counter. And of course I kept looking because June and Byron had gone for a walk and Aunt Ellen and I were doing the yarn store thing. I kept looking and I came across this, which is one of the store brands. I mean, this is one of their dyes and it's just the most beautiful sort of teal color. It is really, really nice. And I decided, and what is the fiber on it? It is, um, superwash blue face luster yarn and 45% silk. Very soft and nice. Well, if you're gonna make a scarf, you might want a hat that goes with it, or you might want fingerless gloves that go with it. And so I got Two skeins. This is Emily who wasn't gonna buy any more yarn for the rest of her life. So that's fine, I went and I asked them to go ahead and put this in a cake because I did have needles with me and I thought if there was any sitting around still to be done, Aunt Ellen might enjoy watching me start a scarf. So I thought, well, I could cast on and knit something, you know, get going. They, you know, I can go to Ravelry and find a pattern or I can do something I already know how. So on the way home from the yarn, and Aunt Ellen bought a, a skein of yarn also to knit a scarf for June in yellow. So, hmm, it'll be fine. It doesn't matter. On the way home, Aunt Ellen said, I have some yarn that I bought there that they told me I should make a hat, that I could make a hat. And I said, but I don't knit hats. And they said, well, maybe someone would knit you a hat out of this yarn since you like the yarn. And so I went ahead and bought the yarn and they gave me some patterns. Do you knit hats, Emily? And I said, yes, I knit hats. And she said, well, would you knit, would you like this yarn and these patterns? And so she gave me a skein of yarn. It's pretty. I mean, it's quite nice. I think it's one of the stranded uh, 
hand dies that they do. Very nice. In fact, maybe this is the card for it. No, it's an earth yarn. Yeah, it is very pretty. And I have patterns for hats now. So I ended up having sworn I wasn't gonna bring home any yarn or at most one skein. I have four skeins. And what's more, just to prove to you how crazy I am, I know you don't really need proof, but I'll give you a little more evidence. If you follow, if you go to Facebook ever, they show you some ads. And I think the ads are largely based on things that you are probably interested in. And so one of the ads I've been seeing for the past two or three months is a yarn company called Bad Sheep. Bad Sheep Yarn Company. And they have dyed yarn based on famous pieces of art. And the one they kept showing me was yarn based on Van Gogh's Starry Night. And I've been looking at this and they keep saying, you know, this is beautiful yarn and you can get it in these different weights and you click through to the page and you can see how beautiful it is. And they show examples of things knitted up with it. And Starry Night is a collection of beautiful blues, some white, some yellow, very pretty. The yarn was very pretty. And I, you know, I'm not buying any yarn because I have a lot of yarn and I just don't need more yarn. So, fine. And on the day that we were flying out there, knowing that I was going to the yarn store with my aunt, I nonetheless ordered a skein of that yarn. I don't know what is wrong with me, but something is wrong with me, clearly. Anyway, so I have another skein of yarn coming sometime soon in the mail. But all in all, it was a really nice trip. Um, I got some ideas. Uh, so we visited my cousin's condo, my cousin's daughter's condo, my first cousin's, first cousin once removed's condo. Such, she has such an eye for color and for decorating. Very nice. And so I got some ideas of colors that she likes and she possibly is There may be a family event coming up within the next year. Um, so I may decide to make her a quilt. Let's just say that. And I have ideas now of what would be nice, what she would like, and I think I'll enjoy doing it. Uh, so that was really fun. It was all fun. It was fun to be with them. My cousin and her husband, June and Ken, um, they would be good friends of ours if they lived here or vice versa. So that's, that's good. So what else? Um, oh yeah, some housekeeping. I have a piece of paper somewhere, but I'm not gonna rustle around to try to find it unless it's right here. No, okay. Uh, this coming week, we are going to have students who are running our church's VBS, pro, excuse me, program, stay at our house. And I don't want to do my usual thing of having a lot of stuff all over the table and then have to clear it away for us to eat dinner. So I am not going to do a lot of stitching between now and next Friday, therefore I will not be making a video, I don't think. Um, the following week, I will make a video. It will be the 5th of July is the Friday. So I will make a video that day. The next week, I don't know, because the next week on the 9th, I'm having cataract surgery on my right eye. And the following week, I'm having cataract surgery on my left eye. So I don't know whether I'm gonna be doing much cross stitch. In fact, some people have told me, oh, you're, you won't be doing cross stitch until you can get your new glasses prescription, which will be quite a while from now. Now, I'm not gonna not make videos for the entirety until I can do cross stitch again, if indeed that, if indeed it turns out I can't do it. Um, I'll just show you my knitting or something, you know, 
uh, they'd be focusing on Variety Show and what's going on more than Cross Stitch. But there's a chance that at least I won't be making a video. I know I will not make a video on the 12th of July. That'll be between the two surgeries. I might not make a video the following week, which would be the whatever, 20. If 20th, I think, of July, I might not do that, or 19th. The next week, I might, um, but no video next week, yes, on the 5th. No video the following week, maybe the week after that. So I, I don't know. I really don't know what's going to happen. I know this coming week, I'm going to focus on things that don't involve me putting heaps of tornadic activity all over the table just to make it easier for us to have these students stay with us um, and I think we're gonna have a good time with them we have really enjoyed we've had them stay with us two other times they're very well I would say well trained in how to be good guests and we're happy to support our church's uh, vacation Bible school program and we just enjoy we enjoy uh, this kind of thing. So, is that everything? I know I didn't show much cross stitch. Sorry, we were away. And nothing next week. No, that's right, nothing next week. Yeah, I don't know, I have no idea. But regardless, I hope that you are having a good time with your stitching or your summer activities, whatever they might be. Um, and I appreciate you watching. I'm getting pings from YouTube saying you need to tell people to subscribe. So, okay, I will. Click the bell. That way, since I am gonna be a little irregular on my posting, you can click the bell and be notified when I post a video. And I don't know, that's all. And you don't have to do those things. It doesn't matter. It will not change my pleasure in making the videos. That's all, Emily, be quiet. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching and many blessings to you, friends.